So today we're at the Mercator Telescope on the island of La Palma. Now you can see out to the bottom of La Palma in the ocean. This telescope is owned and run by the University of Leuven, which is in Belgium and which I really struggle to pronounce. But let's go inside. There's Saskia, who's showing me around today. <laughs> all right, hello. Here's the control room, all pretty standard. Lots of buttons and screens. But we're interested in the telescope, aren't we? So let's go and see the telescope. Now I'll just show you something now. This will be relevant in a minute. Just remember that little room there, because we'll be talking about that little room in a minute when we're upstairs. We're still in the annex building at the moment. So now we're under the telescope, and you see here, here is the foundation of the telescope, separate from the building, completely separate and very strong. And now we're going to go up to the telescope at the top of the dome. Here's the foundation, and this is the point here where the telescope starts turning. So this stays still, and this is the rotating part of the telescope. The telescope is still above us. And now Saskia is leading us up into the main dome. There's some work being done on the telescope today during the day, some electronics work. So that's what we can see happening there in the background. Whew, let me get my breath. So this is an alt azimuth telescope. There's the disc that it rotates on so it can turn around and obviously can rotate back and forward. That's the lens cap which they've taken off for us. That would obviously be protecting the mirror normally. And up there, that black and white signage, that's used sometimes for sort of testing and calibrating the telescope. But let's have a look inside, that's what we want to see. So there's me reflected in the primary mirror. This is something we've seen many times before. If the dome was open, we would see the light come in here and go all the way to the back there, to the primary mirror. It's then reflected back up to here, to the secondary mirror, and then bounces back down again towards the baffle, which is that tube there in the middle, and it hits a third tertiary mirror. And when it hits that tertiary mirror, it goes off to the sides, and we'll talk about what happens there in just a minute. This is a 1.2 meter primary mirror. Very large by the amateur standard, not so large by the professional standard, but this is a very modern telescope. So after the light hits the secondary mirror up the top there, if there's no tertiary mirror, it will come straight through onto this detector, this instrument here on the back of the telescope, which has been worked on at the moment. But if there is a tertiary mirror, that it hits down there, it can go off to the two sides. It could go off to this side, where we see another instrument, or, of course, it could go over to this side. Now, you're probably thinking, where's the big instrument? Where's the big detector here? There's not much there. But actually, the light goes all the way along all this optical fiber down to that room we showed you before. And inside that very specially controlled room is a very important instrument for measuring the spectrum of stars so that instrument is actually 30 metres away from the telescope, the light travelling by optical fibre. Saskia told me I must show this sign. It's the Flemish scientific organisation that funds this telescope, so they're very important. They deserve a mention. Now, obviously, telescopes can be used to look at all sorts of things in space. This particular telescope usually specialises in stars, individual stars, not so much big galaxies and all those other things, but just tiny points. Well, stars are quite big, obviously, but tiny points in the sky. One of the things they particularly specialise in here are variable stars. These are these stars for which the brightness changes over time for various reasons. So sometimes they'll do very long observational periods here. They'll go back to the same star week after week or month after month over very long periods of time to measure those changes. It can be very hard to get time on telescopes for those sort of long-term observations, and that's one of the reasons this telescope was specifically built, so they could start doing those types of observations. So this telescope's been used for science since 2004, and that special spectrograph we were telling you about, the one that's 30 metres away, they started using that in 2009. One other thing I heard, which is really interesting, this detector here, plus another one that may soon be installed here on the telescope, has some of the best CCDs in the world, and that's because they were CCDs that were actually made for a space mission that was cancelled. They'd already built the CCDs. What were they going to do with them? And they're currently on loan here, sitting there in that instrument. So you're looking at top of the range, space grade CCDs here on this telescope. You're lucky, hey? So there we go, a very brief look inside the Mercator telescope. 
pretty location, this one. It's right on the edge of the observatory. It has a really nice view over the island, but more importantly, a very nice view of the stars.